Find a space needle in a haystack in Stephen James O'Meara's Secret Sky on Astronomy.com or tour Phil Harrington's Binocular Universe when you subscribe to Astronomy Magazine. Our video starts now. Hello, welcome to Astronomy Magazine's How To. I'm Senior Editor Michael Bakich. Today I'm going to explain how to observe a lunar eclipse. I thought I'd explain what happens during a lunar eclipse by using these three props. The flashlight will signify the sun, the globe is earth, and this wooden ball is the moon. For a lunar eclipse to occur, three celestial bodies have to be in a straight line. Sun, earth in the middle, and the moon. Now the moon circles the earth once a month. But we don't have a lunar eclipse once every month. That's because the moon doesn't lie on a direct line with the sun and earth. Sometimes it's above and sometimes it's below. So most of the time it misses earth's shadow. But every now and then a lunar eclipse occurs. In this slide sequence we see three things. The rust colored inner circle represents the darkest part of earth's shadow. That's called the umbra. The outer gray circle is the lighter part of Earth's shadow, the penumbra. And the yellow-white object is the moon. This image shows the beginning of the penumbral eclipse. The moon, moving eastward in the sky, has just made contact with Earth's outer shadow. Because the shadow is not all that dark, early stages of the penumbral eclipse are difficult to see. This image shows the beginning of the umbral eclipse. Here's where observers perk up, and here's where photographers begin their eclipse shots. It's easy to see the umbra crossing the moon's face, even from a city. This image shows the moon totally immersed in Earth's umbra. Totality has begun. This image shows mid-eclipse. It's at this point that observers estimate how dark a given eclipse appears. I'll talk about this later. Roughly an hour after totality starts, it ends, as shown in this image. As the moon emerges from Earth's umbra, a bright edge appears on its eastern side. This image marks the end of the eclipse for most observers, when the moon emerges from Earth's inner shadow. Our final image shows the end of the penumbral phase of the eclipse. No part of the moon remains covered by any part of Earth's shadow. Solar and lunar eclipses are different in three ways. First, the sun is really dangerous to look at. You should never look directly at the sun without a safe solar filter. But during an eclipse of the moon, the moon is totally safe to look at. You can watch it for as long as you want. The second difference between lunar and solar eclipses is the number of people able to see these eclipses. For a solar eclipse, the moon's shadow cuts such a narrow swath across Earth's surface that few people are able to see it. And the ones that do usually have to travel thousands of miles to get there. With lunar eclipses, anybody on the night side of Earth where it's clear can view the eclipse. The third difference between lunar and solar eclipses is the length of totality. For a solar eclipse, totality is short, no more than seven minutes long, and that's for the absolute best. Lunar eclipses occur much more leisurely. A lunar eclipse totality can last more than an hour. The most dramatic part of any lunar eclipse is the color the moon turns during totality. The color has nothing to do with the moon itself. The color comes because Earth's atmosphere, acting like a lens, bends some sunlight onto the dark lunar surface. If Earth's atmosphere is dirty, say after a volcanic eruption, there'll be a lot of particles in the air, and so the eclipsed moon will appear dark. If Earth's atmosphere is clean, the moon, during totality, will look bright. Throughout history, many solar eclipses have made the news. But what's history's most famous total lunar eclipse? I think it's the one that happened in the year 1504. In that year, explorer Christopher Columbus made what's probably the most clever use of a lunar eclipse. 
While exploring the New World, he and his men were attacked by a particularly ruthless group of natives who wouldn't listen to reason. Columbus, though, knew a total lunar eclipse was about to occur, so he told the natives that unless they played by his rules, he was going to make the moon disappear. At the appointed time, the eclipse began, and by Columbus's own account, everything went fine after that. You don't need any special equipment to see a lunar eclipse, just your eyes. Although, binoculars or a small telescope might help you pick out colors on the moon's surface you wouldn't ordinarily see. One of the best things about lunar eclipses is you don't have to travel anywhere to see it. Just walk on in your backyard, even if you live in a city. The moon is bright and it's easy to see. French astronomer André-Louis Dangean proposed a 0 to 5 scale to evaluate how dark a lunar eclipse appears. The letter L represents the Dangean number for any eclipse. Dangean assigned 0 to the darkest eclipses. During such events, the moon may disappear at mid-totality. If L equals 1, the eclipse is dark. You can still see the moon, but it's tough to pick out any surface details. When L equals 2, the moon appears deep red or the color of rust. The center of Earth's umbra is dark, but its outer edge appears bright. If L equals 3, the moon looks brick red and not dark at all. The umbra often shows a white or yellow edge. Finally, Dangean assigned the brightest eclipses the number 4. The moon appears bright copper red or orange. The umbra also has a bright bluish rim. Lunar eclipses are just about the easiest astronomical event to photograph. Take a film or digital camera, set it on a tripod, and point it at the moon. On a tripod, your camera won't be driven to compensate for the motion of the moon, so you want to choose a fast film speed, 400 or faster. Second, you're going to need a long focal length lens, at least 200 millimeters. If you use a smaller focal length lens, like a 50 millimeter, the moon will appear so small in the frame you won't see any details. Finally, take your time and enjoy yourself. A total lunar eclipse from start to finish lasts more than three hours. You'll have plenty of time to do all the photography you want. Use different lens settings, different camera speeds, just have a good time. Thanks for watching. I'm Michael Bakich. For more on Astronomy Magazine, visit our website at astronomy.com.